What up everybody, this is your Cosmic Home Girl, and I'm here to give you a weekly cosmic weather report or a weekly horoscope or astrological forecast for March 10th through March 17th of 2019. So from March 10th through St. Patty's Day, so happy St. Patty's Day to those who celebrate. Don't get too twisted and faded out there, you know what I'm saying? Mercury's retrograde in the sign of Pisces, so don't be drinking and driving or doing anything too wild. Um, but hope you get, hopefully if you celebrate, you have a good time. So what's going on this week? You know what? Actually, this week is pretty quiet, you guys, uh, to be honest. It's pretty it's pretty quiet um there's just only a few minor aspects that are going on that are very positive aspects that i see in the sky that are like really was popping um there's no planetary ingresses from one sign to the next it's nothing like the previous week trust me last week was intense like let me know if you guys felt that we had uranus switch into taurus we had a new moon in pisces that was super emotional you know kind of on that emo tip <laughs> I don't know about you guys but I'm a Pisces moon and oh it made me such a mess let me tell you um and you know we still have Mercury retrograde in the sign of Pisces as well and actually oh right now this Mercury retrograde is right on my moon in Pisces so I have been feeling it feeling it feeling it uh mercury is still in a conjunction with chiron and as i discussed previously in other videos chiron it does rule you know where you might need a little bit of tlc you might need some healing you might need to try to work hard to get over something um you may have some you know some pains and some hurts of the past or currently that that are, that really get to you and you have opportunities to heal from it and become wiser as a result and maybe even give other people advisement um, on wherever it is that you've healed from that's that's what Chiron usually rules it's like a soft spot I say it's like kind of like a bruise it's a bruised area and you know if you allow that bruise to just heal you know it it can it can heal but um, sometimes while it's healing it gets hit again and and bruised again and you gotta just work through that and you know work through the pain and and do your best to learn from your mistakes of what caused you to get hit there again so a lot of us are going through that because mercury is the mind um it's what we're thinking about it's communication it's what we're talking about so it's the mind heavily okay <clears throat> excuse me and um that means that this there could be some painful things that are on your mind at this time that have to do with you know this area of life um and even though these are in two different signs yeah, it could be wherever Pisces is in your chart, you know, you're you're thinking about uh, certain things, reminiscing about certain things, but even the conjunction with Chiron alone can have some memories that, you know, may come back that are uh, a, a little bit emotional come up, and it could just be in general, but it could be in the, you know, the next house in your chart, whatever Aries rules for you. Um, like, for example you know, for me, Pisces is my fifth house, which is, it's romantic relationships. It's also your self-esteem. And for me, Aries is the sixth house of health. And what's coming to light for me is uh, with the retrograde is going back over, you know, there's, there's issues that are coming up again, uh, that have to do with romantic relationships and self-esteem. And um, also it's health, body issues, you know what I mean, that are related to this area of life too which is romantic relationships um of the past you know things have come up for me where i've remembered how m almost every man that i have had a serious relationship with has had something to say negatively about my physical body and how i need to change it how i need to gain weight how i should have plastic surgery or something about my face you know like i've just had bad luck <laughs> not really cho chose them very very uh wisely i guess in the past to where i was with men that um said you know that i was romantically involved with and they said stuff like that and so that's the whole chiron and aries working on health issues so now because those memories have come back and they're super painful they're stinging me real hard right now i'm like yo i need to get back on my you know fitness and um, doing what makes me happy and feel good and also like physically strong and, you know, healthier to where I'm satisfied with my physical appearance and the feeling of it. You know what I mean? So that's just an example of 
Mercury retrograde conjunct Chiron, you know, it is in two different signs. Um, so two different areas of your life could be affected. If you guys have any other examples of this, you know, leave them below so we can discuss and we can all learn from each other. But that's just, you know, my personal example that I know of that's going on. So we still have the sun continuing to be in a conjunction with Neptune. As the week progresses, um, it will move further away and not have as much of uh, an effect like an influence by Neptune, but right now it does make us very sensitive um, in certain ways. For some people, it's not really that they're emotional. It's just that um, maybe their bodies are sensitive. You know, the sun can rule our vitality and uh, our, our health in some ways, you know, because the sun shines. I mean, look, even this symbol on this website is yellow for the sun. So it's, it's your ability to shine and be bright, and um, that can mean you know, your vitals. So they can be weakened by Neptune. Neptune dissolves things. So it can dissolve vitality. So there's a lot of people who are like, they're getting sick, um, especially like on the, in the Northern hemisphere. And, you know, in the, in the USA where I live, we've had some crazy weather. We've had some up and down weather, super cold, and then it heats up and then it gets cold again. And, you know, just this time of year, it happens to be Pisces season. Um, when we have that weird weather and we're trying to transition from winter to spring, you know what I mean? So your vitality can be weakened, um, when we have transits to Neptune. Let me tell you this whole month of this whole last month, I've gotten sick like a, a few times. Um, I'm trying to get over something again right now. So this can definitely weaken your, um, your immune system or your vitality. So, you know, do your best out there to take care of yourself, to up your, uh, immunity, keep up with your supplements, your vitamins, your diet, whatever, step it up if you have to, um, you know, whatever remedies that you have that you, that work for you, definitely do those right now. Um, so yeah, the sun is still conjunct Neptune. There's a lot of things that can st still be unclear right now, to be quite honest, you guys. Um, and people are in kind of in la la land. They, <laughs> a lot of us, maybe it's hard for us to keep track of time or we would like to, spend our days not really worrying about time, just doing nothing, absolutely nothing with our days, not really having much responsibility, just kind of floating because, you know, Neptune rules the oceans and um, it dissolves the, the boundaries of time, the constructs of time. So um, this the sun is like beaming that out here to all of us. So that's kind of how a lot of us can be still feeling this week. Um, but this will begin to dissipate. Another thing that we have still building, um, it doesn't come to an exact conjunction this week, but it's still an aspect, is Venus square Mars. Now, Venus is in Aquarius. Mars is in Taurus. They are both fixed signs. They square each other on the zodiac. And for those of you who don't know what that means, it means that they're four signs from each other. One, two, three, four. Okay, anything, anytime you count one, two, three, four between the signs, that is a square. That's a challenging aspect between the two. Let me tell you, this Venus and Mars square has been causing some stuff, you guys. Like, um, and you know, I'm honest about <laughs> the transits, the good and the bad. I'm not here to just say everything is magical and manifesting. No, I'll tell you what's really going on in the real world. Um, you know, Venus can rule the feminine and that can mean women in general. Um, and Mars can rule the masculine. That can mean men. It can also rule, you know, people who are, it doesn't matter what their gender is, what kind of genitalia they got going on, um, in, in their zone or whatever, you know, they can possess a heavy amount of either masculine or feminine energy. You can have a woman who's got a lot of air sign and fire sign energy and they're like, they identify more as being uh, masculine and you can have a man who's got more, you know, earth and water and they're like feminine. So it could be feminine energy and masculine energy just battling it out with each other and super frustrated with one another. So with that being said, um, th that could be battles within yourself. Uh, I know I've talked about this in, in the, the monthly, you know, when I talked about, I talked about this in the month of March horoscope. Um, but this is in full effect now, you guys, because Venus is at 10 degrees. Um, let me advance the days through the 17th to see her progress through 
um, Aquarius. So yeah, um, she's going to be from 10 to uh, 19 degrees of Aquarius this week that I'm covering the 10th through the 17th. And you see she continues to square Mars because Mars is moving at a similar pace, staying around the same degree as Venus. So they are squaring each other even this week. So, um, you know, this can cause some tension and some friction within relationships because it doesn't matter, you know, like uh, most relationships do have a person who's the more masculine or dominant person, which can mean Mars, and, and then the more feminine or submissive person, which is Venus. So it doesn't matter the dynamics of your relationship or, you know, the, the genders or whatever. You can be having some tension and friction going on. Um, even if you're not in a relationship, you know, you can be frustrated with the opposite um, energy, you know, whether you're masculine or feminine, you could be frustrated. Like if you're a woman, you know, just the classic, okay, you're a woman, you're frustrated with men. Yo, let me tell you, this is all the way real, <laughs> okay? Um, I have a friend who um, is a woman, a very feminine woman, and yeah, she's had a man, an ex of hers, actually threatening her this week, trying to threaten to attack her and attack other women that are associated with her. Um, and it's been very scary and intense. So that's kind of the worst scenario that can happen. Um, yeah, myself, I've had a really frustrating situation with a very masculine male as well, a muscular masculine man. <laughs> um, super frustrating. I really just wish I could strangle them, but you know, I'm really trying to hold back. I'm trying to maintain self-control. You know what I'm saying? Um, but, and, and it doesn't help for me that Venus is squaring all my Taurus stuff and Mars is in my sign, which is, I have a Taurus stellium. Um, so for me, it's even more intense. And yes, if you are a fixed sign, if you are an Aquarius, a Taurus, a Leo, or a Scorpio, um, this fixed, um, square, between Venus and Mars can be even more intense for the fixed signs, okay? Because they're angling you in, in a way that's like uh, more intense than the other signs. But, um, and then yeah, for, for the fixed signs, I think these end up in relationship houses. For Scorpio, this is, you know, Mars in your seventh. For Leo, this is Venus in your seventh. Um, Aquarius, this is Venus in your first, you know? And Taurus, this is Mars in your first. So. It, it can be it can be intense, you guys, but you know this is why I do these forecasts because to be forewarned is to be forearmed. You cannot fully manipulate fate and destiny. Um, whatever will be will be. You know what I'm saying. But if you're aware of the energies that are going on right now, maybe you can do your best to rise above any lower vibrational activities um, or actions that you could take. You know, with Mars pummeling all of my Taurus stellium and opposing my ascendant, trust me, I could really be doing some damage right now. <laughs> I mean, I could really be, yeah, I'm not even going to further reiterate, but you know what I'm saying. Like, but I am doing my best to just channel the energy elsewhere, like into physical activity, like dancing or something, you know. Um, and for some women, maybe they feel like their femininity is being challenged, you know, or if you're a, uh, whatever feminine being you are, like you may feel like your feminine femininity is being challenged, or if you're a masculine, you know, or a man, you feel like your masculinity is being challenged by, uh, by feminine beings or a woman, you know, there, it's, there's just a lot of tension right now. Um, I guess the, you know, let's flip the coin. I always got to try to give both sides. Um, I guess a good thing that can come out of this square is maybe there's some tension and frustration that comes up. Um, and it, and it brings up conversations that need to be had, you know, to try to fix issues within relationships. Um, maybe there's some behaviors that are going on that are just really unacceptable and they need to get mentioned and called out in some way. But, you know, for some people, it might be them calling it out like, yo, you know, like in a really brash way. But for some people, maybe it's just like you saw and you find a way to say, look, I'm not happy with this. This is not cool. OK, what can we do about this? So 
Uh, this could be also between yourself, within yourself. Everybody has masculine and feminine energy at different levels. So, you know, maybe you're trying to be more of one or the other or balance it out. Um, you're not being receptive enough. So, you know, anyway, that's, that's going on this week and it continues through the next week and actually it continues through the whole entire month you guys i'm telling you that that aspect right there is what's making me want to skip ahead in time like for real because you know just yeah i'm not gonna get into all the personal stuff but yo i'm like oh this is so frustrating so you know just hang in there you guys um if you're going through any relationship stuff with the mars and venus square or you know challenges within yourself um, just try to look for proper solutions. Okay. And you can maybe, yeah, just look for proper solutions. All right. So let's get into date order of what's going on. Actually, um, we have Mars making a sextile to Neptune on the 10th. So this is actually really good, uh, for creativity. Um, creativity doesn't always have to mean you do some sort of art or something, you can apply creative energy to anything that you do, even if it's cooking, even if you have a more practical job and it requires a level of creativity to come up with new ideas. Um, Mars is action and Neptune is, you know, divine creativity. So maybe this is you applying yourself in a way that helps you to create new things and be believe in what it is. Like Neptune is just believing. It's believing in things that even if other people think they don't exist, it exists in your mind and your imagination. So Mars is putting forth the action to make those things happen and make them real. Okay. Um, and especially if you are a dancer or martial artist or, you know, you do something that is action oriented, you're physically moving around and, you know, art, um, artistic, creative energy combined. This is an excellent day, March 10th, but even the days, you know, a couple of days following, um, Mars, uh, you know, will still be in an aspect to Neptune and still be working for you, but it's just super duper strong on the 10th, um, the 10th, 11th, 12th, you know, 13th, while it's still like within a few degrees. Um, so pretty much this whole week, it's, it's a really good aspect to work with energetically. Um, myself, you know, in order for me to try to get better because I've been under the weather, you know, you got to sweat it out if you get sick. So that's what I've been doing is, is, uh, dancing and sweating it out. And it's like, it's like the old creativity, you know, with the dance moves are coming back. And I think this Mars and Neptune, um, sextile with each other is really working in, in that, um, in that way. So then we go to the 14th and Mars is making another good aspect to, um, another planet which is, um, it's making a sextile, or I'm sorry, it's making a trine aspect to, um, to Saturn. Uh, let's see. It's more so like, hmm. Okay. So I'm going to say like, um, early morning, the 14th, but you know, also on the 13th, um, if we're looking at it by exact degree, then yeah, it is like super early in the morning on the 13th or the 14th. I'm sorry. Um, and this is, I don't forget you guys, I based this on like, I'm on the West coast of the U S um, Pacific time. So, you know, this is what time it is. But if you're in, um, far, if you're on the East coast of the U S this is like still in the morning. If you're on the, um, Eastern part of the world, this is like all into the 14th. Um, uh, excuse me. So the 13th, 14th is a, is a really good days for, um, just concentrating and working on getting things done. This can help you to focus. Mars will still be sextile Neptune, which is great creativity. You know, sometimes Mars and Neptune aspects, even the positive ones can make you trail off a little bit. You're such a dreamer. You want these dreams to happen. You want creative things to happen. Then you can get lost. Neptune world's getting lost, you know? Um, so you can fall off track a little bit, but once we build up to that exact trine to Saturn, which is another good aspect to work together, then this is, um, Mar uh, Saturn anchors down. Even look at the symbol looks kind of like a little anchor too. Saturn anchors down whatever planet it touches or, you know, makes a, a strong aspect to. So when this happens with Mars, this is action and movement being anchored down. 
by Saturn, which is about hard work and discipline. And um, we have a little bit of creativity added to it. So this is really a week where I know it sounds corny, but making dreams come true. Um, dreaming up things, creative ideas and stuff, and putting in the work to make them truly happen and manifest. Um, you know, out here in the physical world and not just stay something that you're dreaming about in your mind, okay? Um, so then we move to the 15th and this is when Mercury, it makes a square aspect to Jupiter. Um, Jupiter, let's see. Well, yeah, according to this website, it's like probably um, going to be also on the 14th that we're going to have this aspect of uh, Mercury and Jupiter in a square of each other. Um, I'm trying to move it to the exact, more like the exact aspect because the, la the later it gets in the day, the further backwards, because Mercury is retrograde, uh, the further backwards that it, um, Mercury moves. So um, on the 14th, let's see, hold on, Jupiter is 23 degrees. Oh, and also, yeah, on the 14th, the Sun and Mercury will be in a um, conjunction with one another. So, yeah, I'm doing this live and I'm not editing because ain't nobody got time for that. But, yeah, just know that the 14th, the Sun and Mercury are conjunct each other in the sign of Pisces. Um, so I'm going to jump to that real quick and then jump back to the, the Jupiter aspect. Um, this was not on my notes and this is totally Mercury retrograde. <laughs> so Mercury and the Sun are going to be in a conjunction with one another. Now, this is in Pisces. What, and this is retro, which is going back over stuff. Usually with Mercury retrograde, um, you know, it, things can be very uncertain. Um, the sun and Mercury in a conjunction, the sun is light, beaming. So maybe it can beam a little bit of clarity into things. And I know it's like clarity, really? <laughs> when, when we're talking about, you know, all this uh, Pisces energy in the air, um, yeah, maybe there could be some more clarity brought to situations that have been confusing d due to Mercury retrograde. Just for a hot second, you know, while they are um, really, really close together in degree, which, you know, um, this is, yeah, West Coast time, you know, 6.30 in, in, the, in the evening. Um, East Coast time, it could be um, really late at night. Eastern part of the world, 15, you know, the 15th. Um, <clears throat> of March, but yeah, this is, um, this is maybe a, for a hot second, you know, Mercury's retrograde, but the sun is like, hold up, wait a second, like shining a flashlight on wherever Mercury is retrograde at in your chart and letting you know, like what's really, really going on. What's, what's the true, you know, th the real deal that's going on here with, um, situations so um, just briefly through the signs, I'll let you know that um, for Aries, this is your 12th house, which is uh, anything that could be uncertain in your life, you know, maybe going back over some things of the past or um, anything to do with your inner world or anything to do with addictions or um, patterns and behaviors, victim, sa victim savior roles, you know, all that 12th house stuff. For Taurus, this could be with your friends and groups that you belong to. There could be some uncertainty with friendships. Um, I had a Taurus rising friend hit me up and, and let me know like that they're confused right now about who their friends truly are. And that's definitely Mercury retrograde in the 11th house. So maybe this Sun and, and Mercury conjunction for like a, a day or so can help to bring more certainty and clarity you know, into things or just a little peep hole of insight through the fog. Um, and then for Gemini, this is with your career. So maybe you guys are uncertain about career stuff right now. You know, maybe there could be some clarity brought to that. Um, for Cancer, it has to do with your beliefs and your opinions. And maybe if you guys are in school, um, what direction you want to go with your education, you know, you're confused about it. This could be some clarity for a second there. If you are a Leo, this is your eighth house, which is your intimate relationships and what you want out of them. And it could be some stuff to do with taxes too. This is tax season here in the US um, and the eighth house does rule that. So taxes are other money stuff. For Virgo, this could be your relationships, clarity of what direction you wanna go 
within um, relationships or what you really want out of relationships, whether you're single or taken. For Libra, this could be with your job, you know, with work or with health. Maybe you've got some health things that are uh, uncertain or bothering you right now. And maybe this is some insight into how to cure that or clear it up. Um, for Scorpio, this is your romantic relationships. Maybe there's some uncertainty there where you want to um, strangle ninjas and um, now all of a sudden, you know, there's some clarity or they all of a sudden, you know, appear with some answers to things or something like that. Um, or it could be clarity into some other things besides that, like self-esteem issues, who you really are, how you want to present yourself out there um, at like confidently. You know, maybe some clarity into what makes you feel confident, what makes you feel happy as an individual. And then for Sagittarius, this is where home really is. Or maybe there's there's some uncertainty with that. You know, maybe you guys are not really happy with where you're living. Or maybe there's some family situation or relationship that there's some uncertainty there. So, you know, maybe this could be a second of clarity um, for, <clears throat> excuse me, Capricorn. Uh, for Capricorn, you know, maybe this is... Um, something to do with just anything that you've been thinking about that has been unclear because this is in the third house of the mind and what direction you want to go with something a any anywhere in your life pretty much you know maybe you just have had like r a really like a lot of brain fog lately and I, I know Capricorns don't dig that at all you guys like to be certain of what you're doing and where where you're going and your direction but all this stuff in Pisces can make even the straightest, you know, straight and narrow path Capricorn like kind of fall off a little bit off track. So maybe this is a moment of clarity to kind of see, you know what, I need to get my stuff together. I need to be organized. I need to do all these multiple tasks, you know, and, and this is how I'm going to do it. For Aquarius, this is your second house of money. So that can mean um, you guys have had some money issues. Oh my gosh, I tell you guys all the time, I have numerous, countless Aquarius rising friends. I always attract Aqu Aquarius rising friends and they've had some money issues. Some of them have and they're like uncertain as to what's going on and how do they clear this up? Maybe this is a moment of some insight, you know, into what needs to be done and how they can go about it. And then for Pisces people, this is just with your identity, with yourself. Um, your appearance, you know, maybe there's some things that you've been wanting to change, but you're not sure um, how you want the world to know you, but you're not sure. And now this is a moment of um, clarity into that for a hot second. And I say for a hot second because Mercury is going to continue to move backwards and come back into a conjunction with Neptune. Um, and the sun continues with Neptune as well. And Neptune is the fog machine. Remember that. Okay, so now back to, and then Mercury square Jupiter. So even though the sun and Mercury, the sun can be peeking through the fog a little bit, okay? Um, we still have Jupiter um, and Mercury making a square to one another, okay? So <clears throat> this is more so on the 15th. Mercury square Jupiter and then Mercury is moving back, you know, it's moving away from the sun and it's conjunct Neptune. So what this means is um, there can still be moments of, uh, you know, maybe getting too hyped up about something. Jupiter is the planet of hyping things up. Everybody, let's party. Let's just go. Let's just do it. And it's in Sagittarius. It's the sign that it rules that acts like that. If you know Sagittarius people, they are like, they rule the term lit, like, it's lit and turning up and all that. Oh my gosh, Sagittarians, all the fire signs actually, but Sag, they really know how to do all of that. You know, so um, this can mean, yeah, let's just do it. Just jump and fly. Just do it. Who cares? Don't think about consequences. Let's have fun, right? Um, and then Mercury is making a square to that in Pisces. And then the conjunction to Neptune can be like, I don't see boundaries. I don't see, you know, and Jupiter cannot see boundaries at times too, because it's so hyped about a positive outcome it does not see consequences it does not want to care about petty details just wants to have fun so um a lot of people can have that attitude you know and just kind of jump into some things without thinking so to be forewarned is to be forearmed this is not the best week for uh super 
important decision making. Um, not without, if you, if you can't help it, you can't wait until after Mercury retrograde and all that stuff. You can't wait until the month of April, like a month from now when all this Mercury, Mercury stuff is going to be over with. Um, and you have to make an important decision. Just make sure that you read through everything and make sure you have clear communication. Okay. Communication. Oh my gosh. I can't tell you guys how much communication has been unclear and uncertain between people this the, you know since mercury has been in pisces number one since it's been coming in contact with neptune number two and now we add the retrograde and the square to jupiter communication has been horrible <laughs> it's been terrible um and so just make sure that you ask if you're still clear in your mind and with how you're communicating Make sure you ask people for specific details this week, especially, okay? And I think even next week, we're still going to have some of that. And I'll talk about it next week. But ask for specifics because there can be a lot of assumptions made. And then you just take action based on those assumptions. Then you're like, oh, well, that was kind of dumb. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, if you have important decisions to make, Make sure you think them through. Make sure you write them out. Make sure you ask people for um, a second opinion who can be very logical, that is. Logical people. Uh, for a second opinion, you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, Mercury is still kind of going through some things this week. So just, you know, make sure that you guys write things down. You make lists. You ask for people's names and details, um, important detailed information, okay? Uh, things can get a little shaky towards the end of the week. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what we have going on this week, you guys. Um, so there is still a lot of things going on energetically. Um, you know, as the week ends, we still have, you know, the sun and Mercury still talking to each other, but they are not so close. Um, and then Mercury is closer to Neptune, a little, a little closer to Neptune at the end of the week, especially on St. Patty's Day. Um, you know, we still have got all of this Neptunian Pisces energy in the air and Pisces does rule alcohol. So, um, and it rules getting lost and not paying attention because you're under the influence of a substance or you're just really not paying attention. So make sure you guys are safe out there if you do anything to celebrate that holiday. And if you do drink, um, thank you guys for listening. And, um, I will be back next week with the forecast for the 17th through the 24th. We will get through this, you guys. Um, leave any feedback below if you have any experiences to share with how this energy is affecting you because it does help all of us to learn. Um, it definitely helps me as an astrologer to have real life examples because that's the way that I work. It's not just based on books and data that you read. Nah, I look at real life. I'm like a news reporter, like what's really going on in the world and then how can I interpret it through the planets and everything. So thank you guys. I hope you have a great week. Take care of yourselves and I will see you in my next video. Peace. One last thing I forgot to mention, don't forget that I do have monthly forecasts available for each sign for only $3.33 and the link is in the description box if you would like to purchase those and support my channel and my platform. I would greatly appreciate it. I go more into detail about how all of the energy of the month of March affects you by your sign. That means your rising, your sun, or your moon sign. Um, so if you would like that, it's only $3.33 down below and uh, I will send you the link to your email. Peace everybody.